Uh, you mentioned roster management. We've talked about it last several years. I mean, it's it's a big deal, right? 35, 40%, you said. We've gotten a lot of new faces yeah. this year. You got Demir, Simeon Blair, like you mentioned, Malik <laughs> Feaster. That, who were a couple of those guys that have come in that maybe the casual fan hadn't heard of that they can, they, they're going to be out there at the Liberty Bowl on September 2nd, and it's like, wow, who's that guy? Yeah, you know, we talk about a lot of the skill guys because those yeah. are the, right? Everybody wants to know about the, the skinny ones. guys running around and all that stuff. Yeah, from ones, whatever. You know, a guy that hasn't gotten the attention, I think he'll, he'll get a lot of recognition because he's doing a fantastic job is a guy named Josh Ellison. <laughs> Transfer D lineman from Oklahoma. Played sparringly there. You know, he, he came here. He's one of those guys that, came here in January and know, hey, I'm just here for my final season. Um, and, and, you know, my goal is to put myself in the best situation to win a championship and to, and to win a conference ring. And uh, he's come out and steadily done a lot of things. A lot. Um, maybe that big D tackle position is not as sexy to the average fan, but he's <laughs> going to be a difference maker for our team this year. And uh, I think that's one of those things that you kind of sit back and watch. Obviously, we've had some turnover at specialists. Sure. And, you know, somebody always wants to talk about, look, Demir Blake, he's going to be fantastic. Blake Watson's going to be fantastic, right? We talked about Sammy and all those different guys. But you know, the, the kicking position is just as important as any. Huge. Right? Reed Bauer, the transfer punter from Arkansas. Uh, we expect great things from him. You know, and then you got Seth Morgan, the kicker transfer. Um, we need him to be steady and, and do well. So I think those are some of the names that fans kind of forgot about. Oh, yeah, yeah we do have new kickers. Sure. They won't uh, think about it until it becomes an issue. You know, yeah. so as long as he keeps that's making how it them, goes, right? yeah, and uh, it does what he's supposed to. We, we won't know his name, but uh, no, I think those are some of the names that the fans will get out there and be able to get their names behind and, and see what they're all about. Sure. Just curious, you kind of talked about the transfers and things like that. How has that changed your mindset from a roster management standpoint? Like, incredible recruiter. All the classes, I think, I think we had two back-to-back and -back 21 and 22 top classes. Uh, how does that change with the transfer portal? Do you start focusing more on upperclassmen? Do you kind of get away from the younger freshmen? How does that work? Yeah, so I still believe in our coaching staff, the way we do things and developing guys. And uh, that I will never get away from that philosophy. We're still going to recruit a high school class. Now, there's a lot of colleges out there that say, screw this. We're, we're pushing all the chips in on this roster, win right now, and we'll figure it out. Sure. And if it doesn't, right, it implodes and, and bad <laughs> things happen. But I think you still have to bring in true freshmen and develop them and see where they can become. Um, and and, I, and that, I'll never waver from that. But the portal certainly changed things, right? It used to be, hey, if you lose a redshirt sophomore linebacker, well, you can't just go replace them with a true freshman. Yeah. Maybe you got to go find, is it a sophomore or junior linebacker that comes in and competes? So uh, what it's done is it's made recruiting year round, which it always had been for high school guys. But now with the way this portal is with looking at guys, um, you, you look where your needs are, but you can never perfectly guess, right? If you have a guy that all of a sudden you're going to lose a, a guy in May that you weren't expected to, well, are you able to find that exact piece of the puzzle? Then no, and so sometimes your numbers are a little skewed. You may say, hey, I want 15 scholarship alignment. You lose one, but hey, there's the, the this corn that's really, really good. Well, we can now add him to our roster. Um, and that's just part of it. It's the nature of it, and we have to have an understanding. What it's done is kind of brought me back to my NFL days. Of, I almost feel like an NFL general manager sometimes. Okay, what are we here? Yeah, what I was going to ask if you've hired a GM. Yeah. Is that a position that needs to be kind of come into the college game? You know, the more and more college football programs are hiring GMs, and whether it's an old sure. director of recruiting, somebody that can do that, some of these are handling their NIL salary caps, which we're not supposed to discuss. Um, but I think you need the salary yeah, cap. Yeah, exactly, a salary cap manager. But uh, no, right now I currently, you know, ultimately the roster's on me. And so yeah. I can never sit back in, in January and say, well, we didn't have the piece. Well, that's on me, yeah. you know. And so um, I try to manage it. we got a great staff, great support staff that help assist with all that stuff. Um, and I, but I, I carry around a roster in the back pocket, especially in the off season, because sometimes it's an eraser and a, a pen scratch, or sure. oh, move this guy here, or we added this, um, because it's ever changing now more Absolutely. so than ever. Uh, but I do, it's funny because you do see that general manager title come up. So if, if either of you guys want to apply for the job, I will. Look at. You will have it right after this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> TJ may be better at it than I. I don't know. Well, I, He's a big Madden and NCAA football. Well, I always be good at football, NCAA football too. <laughs> 